Hail, it's Nim or Nim McCree if you're feeling professional, and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today we're going to be talking about the priest talent trees in Dragonflight. Keep in mind, at the outset of this video, this is alpha information. So, what does that mean? That means that things are bound to change. Things are definitely going to change. Numbers are going to be tuned. Things are going to be nailed down. So this is, let's think of this as a first look type thing. Now, before I get started, if you like what I do, or you like the channel in particular, go on and hit subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with everything the channel does. In addition, I stream on Twitch every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do a lot of the MMORPG stuff, so feel free to roll by and you can find that at twitch.tv slash Now, let's look at these talent trees, okay? So as we look at that, you know, we've added three talent trees to WoWhead's talent calculator so you can theory craft plan and share your build ideas. Okay, so there's an app there. You can click on it if you want to. We're not going to do that because then it, it, take, it, it takes both of the talent trees that you have access to, one, one of which is new, which is the class talent tree, and then it'll show the spec talent tree beside it. So theoretically, you and I, if we decided to play priests, we, even if we played two shadow priests, we could build different shadow priests, and theoretically, they are both viable. Now, I want to shatter that right here. So, so look at me, look at me right now. Talent trees are the illusion of choice. What do I mean by that? I mean that when we scroll down here, you'll see all these, all these options. So many options for discipline and holy, shadow, and even, which is a good, a good addition, and I'm not, I'm not slagging this off, the priest, the class tree. But theory crafters are going to find the most powerful, the most throughput increasing build and people are going to copy that it was like that back when talent tree first existed it was like that after the mop redesign and it'll be like that now because in wow throughput beats utility that's just how the game is designed some mmos there are certain fights where having utility is very very good but throughput beats utility in wow it's one of the reasons why in the legion legendary system you, just because you got a helmet, let's say, that re decreased your single target stun by 75%, uh, the cooldown on it. Or, if you, uh, you know, you were, oh yeah, I guess that's okay, that's great, yeah, whatever. And then your other friend got a cloak that every spender you do does 25% more damage after you do one spender. You're like, oh. Oh, yeah, which one are we going to take? We're going to take the spender guy. Why? Because this is, this is a boss and we can't see, see the boss. So let's bring in the damage. And it makes sense to do that, especially as you climb higher and higher end. And of course, the higher skilled players will find ways to work around. They'll do the mechanics without needing crutches or tools or anything. And if it finds that they actually do need those tools, then they'll, they'll spec for that one fight and be done. And the rest of the raid won't need that. Now, this, that being said, there's a caveat. Perhaps the entire raid and fight design ha are being changed in Dragon. I don't know. I haven't had access to play it yet, either alpha, beta, or whatever, when you're watching this, so keep that in mind. But I do want to say that the class trees are a cool idea. Absolutely cool idea. You know, you've got your point, you, and I'm not going to go through one of these, uh, because quite frankly, that's an exercise in utility. I'll let you click on that, because here's the thing. If people want to see, see the priest tree, they'll do that. I'm looking personally looking forward to it. I will be going over the entire paladin class tree, because paladin. Paladin. Now, so we have, of course, Discipline, Shadow Word, whole, Holy, all, that, all, that, all this stuff here. And as you can see, they have eight, so like the, old, like the old stuff, you know, you had to have a certain amount of points before you can access powerful pools. What I'm curious to see is, I want to see this stuff tuned, because certain things did actually catch me off guard. Like, for example, Surrender to Madness does not require max level, right? Think about it. So we're here, we're here, we go, so you know, you go all the way up through here, you need at least 8 points, 9, and then 10. Hungry Void or Surrender to Madness. Now for those who remember back in uh, Legion and in BFA, Surrender to Madness was very, very powerful. Powerful in BFA uh, than it was in uh, Legion. I, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was, yeah, it was Legion. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, Legion. I'm sorry, I, I haven't really played it. I remember... Surrender to Madness priests were just, like, absolutely, if you could keep up your haste, you were just destroying you. So the fact that it's a mid-tier talent, to me, tells probably been significantly nerfed, or it's going to launch and be significantly nerfed. 
So just something to keep in mind here. As we go through weeks, the Akal, let's just take a we'll take a look at some some holy stuff. Starting off, of course, heal an efficient heal that heals an ally. Sure, that's great. Uh, we've got our holy fire for a little bit of damage. Uh, there's Sturge of Light. Your healing spells in spite of an 8% chance to make your next flash heal instant and cost no mana. Backs to two. Perfect. Great again. Heal support. Uh, what's this? Light of the Naru. Cooldowns of holy words are reduced by initial 33% when you cast the relevant spells. Okay, so again, I like the fact that... So, I, li I like stuff like that. Because that shows that if you play a certain way, i.e. the correct way for the build you chose, things become better. Cooldown reduction is one of the greatest ways you can reward a player. For example, uh, I enjoy, if, if I was playing a paladin and every, let's say, every third spender took, you know, nine seconds off my cooldown for Avenging Wrath, so, oh, okay, I just, I have to build, spend, build, and spend, build, and spend. And that incentivizes me not wasting holy power. Especially since there's nothing that costs more than three. At least at this time, in the current state of the game, as I'm recording this during the end of Shadowlands, we're a little bit before Season 4. But, having a cooldown reduction in this case means, oh, okay, I spec for this, I can do this, I can do my Holy Words more, if I do my Holy wor Words more, then I will have more throughput, more HPS, more uh, mitigation, perhaps, whatever it is. I, I like that. Look up here, okay, she's one Divine Star or Halo. Okay, well, we all remember Wicked Star from Anduin, so that's not too bad, I like, I like that. And then let's, I guess, let's look at Discipline here, Purify. Spells harmful effects, removing all magic effects, combines with Purify disease, if known. Now that's interesting. So, I like that. So, this right here, Purify disease, removes all disease from a friendly target. And Purify works that way. So, okay, okay, I like that. I like how they're, they're breaking that out. Now, it's theoretically possible that you have a priest that doesn't get purify disease. Okay. Why? I don't know, because being able to remove certain things are going, certain debuffs could be powerful. Maybe it's not important. In, in general, diseases aren't all that important outside of PvP, and then again, discipline is often considered the PvP spec, so, yeah. I guess. We have our penance. Oh, you actually have to talent into penance. It is theoretically possible to have a discipline priest without Penance. Now, is that a good thing? Perhaps. Maybe Penance was too powerful. Maybe they thought, oh, well, if everybody has to play a Disc Priest, a disc priest the same way. Nobody's going to want to play a Disc Priest if, unless they really like, wow, I can't wait to do damage and heal based on things and manage cooldowns and things. So it's, it's theoretically, it opens up the class. Now, what's going in, let, let's, let's take that lovely theory tower and let's crumble it down and say that whatever puts the most numbers on the board is going to win. So if Penance is overtuned or tuned at a certain level, it's going to be taken. Otherwise, people are going to be like, why are you playing badly? Why are you going full AoE in a single target fight? Why are you doing that? Let's think back to Castle Nathria uh, with uh, Lord Denathria. I'm sorry, Sire Denathria. I think I've been watching a bunch of anime and such. Um, with Sire Denathrius. Sire Denathrius, when he was first killed, people were abusing Unholy Death Knight. Why? Because their build worked, their stat scaling worked, uh, especially with lower stats, and they were a melee class, and you wanted more melee classes to handle certain. They could also off-tank and drop, uh, like, AMZ to help with, help with damage. So, again, they were tuned for that fight, and eventually, because they were so good, they had to be nerfed a couple times, and they were still the best choice after being nerfed. It all depends on the design, and the design comes down to when I press this button, what number am I going to get? And how do I control what number I'm going to get to the most possible degree? Anyways, guys, so this was a pretty fun video to make. I'm going to let you go through here. I, I do want to show, show one thing. So let's look, at, uh, let's, look at, let's look at the holy thing here. We'll just click that real quick. Should load, no problem. Uh, all right, so as you can see, there's the priest tree and there's the holy tree. And it shows, it'll help you math out stuff if you want in a little more... Um, a little more compact environment. So feel free to check that out on Dragonflight, uh, the Dragonflight talent tree on Wowhead. This was a pretty fun video to make. I do want to mention that I, the idea of having build variants is probably never going to happen, but that's not a bad thing. Because once you know what your people bring, once you know what your people can do, you can set a standard. From that standard, you can then be like, all right, these people are good enough to go here or not good enough to go here, and you can design encounters based on that. 
having stuff, this game doesn't work at its current difficulty level with having less than optimal play, especially as you climb to the higher end of stuff, because if we look at how many guilds have killed the Mythic Jailer, and I looked last night, it was 419, I believe, via Raider IO, uh, and Mythic has been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. That either tells us that the, tells us a couple things. One, the player base is probably dwindling. Two, the skill ceiling is probably too high because the content is too hard. When you have to do massive, massive swings on, of the nerf bat on the content before people can do it, well, maybe you might want to just overall increase the difficulty. And then, of course, this still has the same problem of what about your, word, your world first guild? Like Method, Echo, Limit, things like those guilds can smash through the content at its hardest possible iteration, and now it's like, okay, they're probably snoozing through it. Just be like, okay, dodge this, do the chains, get the thing, don't fall in the hole. Okay, we're in phase three, guys, let's go. The reason they're not excited is because they did the hard, and also, as we know, the World First Guilds, uh, once progress is over, it's, it's Jailer O'Clock. Time to sell those mythic carries, get those mounts, uh, to pay back those gold debts, and I'm not mad at them for that, it's just, you know, I'm just saying that. Anyways, tell me what you guys think of this video in the comments below. Hopefully you had a good time. If you did, hey, leave a like, drop a comment, maybe hit that almighty subscribe button and help your boy out here. Uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoy the game. I hope you enjoy the video. May the mount your farming drop on the first kill.